Bungalow Bill here, and welcome back to From the Depths. The Twin Guards and Grey Talons have really started to fall in the last few episodes. The Steel Striders and their enormous amount of banked mineral wealth have not really shown up to play. But the game is still starting to wind down to some aspects, so I think it's time to do what I really wanted to do in this series and build something that is truly large. Okay, well let's begin by sketching out the basic footprint of this boat. I'll start telling I'll start placing down blocks and tell me when to stop. That seems about right. Now, on for the length. Perfect. Oh yes, now this is what I was looking for. Look at this percentage of a square that it takes up. This is absolutely fantastic. Now, it's time to flesh this thing out with some actual physical body and weapons and that sort of thing. It's probably not actually going to wind up as volume intensive and really large in terms of the actual blocks that constitute it, as you might think. Of course, as is always the case with the series, I get interrupted whenever I'm trying to do anything really important. I sort of intentionally let this battle happen. I find it interesting that they can just kind of start inside my units. I have something very close nearby that could have easily taken care of this. I'm just sort of curious as to what's going to happen here. Because we have these kind of meh copters that were built early on, and they're taking on some of these swarm craft. It looks like they're taking on the host first with moderate success. However, I assume these little pixies, yeah, these, these little pixies are actually pretty expensive, so we might just get kind of wrecked. Engaging now. Especially if we can't. Oh, okay. Well, that's not really much to worry about then. I was worried our Sea Wiz wasn't going to be able to hit these very well, but it seems that it's more than capable of doing that. I say more than capable, this is um, not nearly as successful as the first one. I was under the impression they're pretty close range ships, so I wasn't sure why it was taking them so long to turn around. Engaging now. I guess they have pretty long attack runs. And I assume this thing, which is the core to most of these Twin Guard fleets, oh, it does have missile firepower. It's got some purple blocks. I don't know if they're... I think they're disconnected with no connection rules applying. I think currently connection rules get set on any ships anytime they're healed by any source, including out of play construction. So pretty much everything has them at all times. We did not do a very good job at taking those out with Sewas Fire. These guns should be accurate enough to hit missiles of those size sizes and building with similar guns earlier in testing, I was seeing some good success. Looks like these got close enough to each other to turn on 
collision avoidance, which rather than actually making them avoid each other, just makes them freak out a bit. Looking at the relatively high kinetic and low HE damage, I think what's going on with these weapons currently is that their gauge is probably a hair too low. I do think that there were recently there were recently some changes about how HE damage was done, which wasn't supposed to change very much, but I do think it affected some changes with very low gauge guns like this. And sort of the minimum required number to not get hit by the sort of HE minimum damage penalty. Because more like I used to use these 20 module 50 millimeter HE weapons out of one meter autoloaders and have them actually do explosive damage. Now that's not happening. Um, the last time that I actually spread these out a little bit, they're getting getting annoying for me. Moving out. Taking oh, whatever we want. So the last time that I was actually testing this out, I found that I had to use roughly 84 millimeter. HE out of one meter autoloaders before I started having issues with them not doing any HE damage, which is larger than I had observed previously. Okay, so the Grey Talons also snuck up on me while I was building. It looks like they may have a little bit of materials procurement issues between their ships. I believe we've seen this one fight successfully before, so I don't know why this one in particular has low materials right now and isn't being shared from the other ones. The new ship this time, or the one that we haven't fought before I think, is the Cerberus, which does in fact use the new propellers. I doubt there's anything with Eddy Blades left. Hopefully the Flood Fill is going to get sufficiently under the surface first. It may have issues because um, these things have been rebuilt. Yes, in fact, actually all of my flood fills look like they're going to have issues, so I'm going to unpause, try to fix that. It does look like it spawned in a little too close, though. I'm just gonna assume those are correct. So the Paper Tiger is gonna to have to do everything this fight because this spawned in way too close for a submarine and just got instantly obliterated. The Paper Tiger is not... is not sufficiently powerful to win this, I think. It's not like it's um, defenseless or anything. God damn it. But both of these ships really needed a considerably longer spawn distance. Okay, what happened was away? It looks like we killed the Valkyria. We're shooting at the Cerberus, which appears to have sunk and is firing missiles at us, safely underwater. It is below the altitude that is the normal despawn height. Okay, there we go. It is getting the too low despawn. Receiving. Engaging now. Looks like the Paper Tiger is doing an okay job. Its railguns are definitely a little too powerful for this task. And there must be quite a bit of kinetics to these cram shells because they're getting through our lambs pretty easily, although that is a lot of cram firepower. And a pretty small package, so this was probably improved at some point. Looks like that cram turret was taken out though. And we're full of holes, but this craft actually works remarkably well when it's completely full of holes. And 
managed to scrape things together despite the fact that the flood fill just got immediately annihilated. The Paper Tiger at least has some armor and some plans to fight when it takes damage. The Flood Fill really has absolutely none. Okay, so I'm gonna have to be really careful because I got a I got a spinner this time when I opened up the Miles, as I've decided to call him. So now, even though I have my move speed for these blocks greatly enhanced from the defaults, it is still going to take me some amount of time to get where I was working on this ship earlier. So. I have built a small unit there, which is basically self-sufficient in terms of having forward propulsion and lift jets, because obviously this thing is going to have to be a thruster craft. Um, something that takes up approximately a quarter of a tile will not be highly functional as a water vehicle. So I'm basically going to take this unit, um, delete it where it is right now, copy it all over the place, and then connect them with long ropes of wooden beams. So we have finally arrived at our destination. Let's turn movement off. I do not know why we have the paper tiger. That must be where our, um, actual avatar is, so I'm just going to move us here for now. Because that paper tiger is almost entirely on the opposite side of the map. So this thing is basically just going to be a big dumb brute that sh shoots large missiles. It looks like the steel striders have found us, but I'm basically just going to take this unit and copy it everywhere after blowing up the set of the steel striders. I do have to actually set this to be what I want, but actually the default looks pretty good, so I might go with that with just a few small tweaks. So here is the fleet th that the steel striders have sent against me, interrupting my building progress once again. They have sent two harpy wings, two albatrosses, and a resolute, and my side, which is more numerous, but some of the lower quality craft that I built earlier in this playthrough, has a set of submarines and has some of my water skimmers, as well as um, this thing. Often when I fight the Albatross, I'm using air vehicles that they do not fight back against to any real extent. Let's see what happens here. I've also, I don't think I've fought the Harpy Wings before. Yeah, there's way too much text on the left side. I'm also interested to see if these submarines which shoot large missiles are going to be able to do much. They also have the same issue as we've had before, that... They need to... Oh, and yeah, I didn't save and fix all of them, so they just all have the wrong settings for all of their surfaces, and... It's just... it's just a mess. I think I'm just going to sort of deal with them being bad for the rest of this. Fortunately, the Sea Wiz is being pretty effective. The large barrage of large missiles from all those submarines also just kind of destroyed things, but definitely, definitely seeing a lot of loss of effectiveness in these craft. I don't think the submarines are that useful for me anymore because I've largely switched to some other vehicles. I just still have a few of them spawned in. Don't know, either... It's, it's really hard to lock to craft now, it always prefers to go to munition. So, I don't know, either maybe I'll fix them. Or just scrap them all for some other stuff. Looks like the enemies are pretty much just down to the resolute. The fairly unarmored harpies died almost instantly, and the albatrosses did not last much longer. On our side, not really that much damage, although um, we're about to inflict catastrophic damage to ourselves if we don't steer out of the way. 
fortunately we did. More purple blocks there. I can definitely see the effects of having connection checks off. I believe this is one of our submarines. Yes, operating exactly as was intended. Can't torpedo that, can you? Well, despite the submarines doing whatever it is they were doing, we made it through that with some overwhelming firepower. Oh, there's, there's something else. Somewhere. All right, well, wherever it was, I'm sure it died. It was probably a sunken albatross or that sort of thing. I don't think I actually have any torpedo firepower on this team. So it turns out that Miles is so large that um, having materials on the back of Miles does not allow me to build on the front of Miles, as I am just now discovering. Yes, I have no materials nearby, so I'm going to have to move some of my fleets around to continue building. For some reason, I was able to build this much, and now I can't build anymore. Okay, I have repositioned my meatball, but this is still getting increasingly frustrating to build on. Perhaps I can move this craft to be more centered on my resource harvesters and I'll have better luck, but I'm having extreme difficulty being allowed to build this. Also, because each of these pods of missiles has its own AI, the list is quite long. And despite the fact that there's one high priority one, um, each new one that I place takes control over all of the thrusters anyway, so I have to turn them all off instead of just having a few that are sort of the main ones. Anyway, I'm not going to make this that much larger in terms of missiles. I already have a lot. However, I do need to make sure that I have enough propulsion spread around that this thing isn't just going to fall out of the sky at some point due to having a few pieces shut off. I am highly reliant on the automatic thrust balancing for this craft. to um, maintain its functionality. So this is going to be the extent to the firepower. Now I'm just going to build redundant connections and thrust to keep it airborne. I haven't armored the ammo at all. I figure if it gets hit, it gets hit, and that's really all that I can do about it. Well, the Terravor dared to disrupt my building, which, while it is somewhat to be expected, is really unfortunate because it takes me a very long time to bring miles in and out of play. Still not an incredibly large number of blocks, but something about the sheer physical size uh, brings up a blue loading spinner and makes you think I've crashed the game every single time. Loathing, not a very big challenge for a meatball and a husk, but it must be done. Bounces, but the timed shells going off, or the timed fuses going off. It'll probably actually do respectable damage because we have no laser defense and it's taking a while before we go ahead and reduce ourselves to its altitude, but, well, that first cram barrage really did a number on it, and there's no way it can take these shells for long, even if we're missing a lot because it's kind of bouncing. Despite being a laser craft, it does come equipped with smoke itself. I'm not sure why we're not firing constant barrages. I don't know if water is being considered an obstacle like other terrain. It's possible that the waves are being considered an obstacle and that we're not firing. Looks like it must be AI dead because we're ignoring it now. Hmm, it looks like mirror mode failed to apply in miles for some locations due to probably me not being able to build in them. So I'm probably not gonna actually bother and put more missiles out here, but I am gonna have to put some thrust out here to compensate. It's alive. So, 
This is about as complete as Miles is going to get. I have to say, if you're going to do any sort of build like this, do not do it in the campaign mode. This was terrible. I had issues all over with not being able to build because I was too far from anything that produced resources or that sort of thing, mirror modes that were incomplete, patchiness. Ultimately, Miles costs almost a million materials, has 127,000 volume, and about 900 missile firepower. I even added a lumberyard in the middle, which is in no way just to cause aim, aim point spoofing. As weird as the automatic control stuff is, it is sufficiently functional for this purpose to move miles around. I was hoping that despite the massive uh, drag that miles creates, that the top speed would be slightly better than 13 meters per second. I do find this slightly disappointing. However, eventually I'm going to get miles onto the front line and we're going to see what this thing can really do. Of course, we'll have to do that in the next episode because I've already taken quite a bit of time and I have some things that I have to go do today. So next episode, hopefully actually do something with this as well as engage the enemies a bit more rather than this episode where it's really just skirmishing while trying to build the miles. So I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope to see you in the future. I suppose I do have one more addendum before the end of the video. I am now trying to just load the blueprint for Miles, and I have been staring at a spinner for quite some time. Um, every time I put Miles into play, it cost me about a minute, I think. And even just loading in that dead blueprint took me about a minute as well, so... Despite the fact that his performance, while in play, is reasonable, it's it's not going to be fun for me to work with, but of course I'll skip all of that in the actual recordings. Oh, I should point out, it has other consequences too. Um, the numbers for the build percentage scale with the size, so I'm trying to, I was trying to build on this harvester and I couldn't see because my entire screen was, yeah, it was just numbers. So just plenty of problems.